Hi, and welcome back to Reflect Forward. I'm your host, Carrie Siggins, and I'm so glad you are here today. Today is an advice from a CEO episode, and we're going to talk about navigating uncertainty because that seems to be the name of the game uh, in leadership right now in running, growing, and scaling a company. And I equate navigating uncertainty kind of like sailing a ship through a storm, <laughs> through a big stormy sea without a map or a compass. Right? You know that it's rough waters. You know that there's all kinds of things that could go wrong, but you're not 100% sure how to steer your way through it because you don't know exactly what is going to happen. And sometimes like there might be an iceberg out there that you just don't even see. Uh, like COVID, for example, or so many businesses never saw that coming. I certainly didn't uh, didn't see that coming. And as I'm looking forward as to what's to come, I don't see that 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 times are going to be any less uncertain. And I think that many other leaders would agree with me. So we have to really intentionally think about how we want to lead through this uncertainty and teach our employees how to navigate uncertainty because. We need to be able to handle anything that comes our way. We need to be building resilient teams and resilient businesses that can handle the stress of what's to come, that can recover from the stress of the things that have happened in these past couple of years. And so I think it's a, a really important topic. It's not an easy one. And so I would like to just share a little bit about what I've learned navigating um, these complex issues and uncertainty, uh, why I think that it's such an important intentional skill to develop and why some leaders fail at it. So first let's talk a little bit about what we mean when we say complexity and uncertainty. So complexity refers to situations that are difficult to understand, there's difficult problems to solve that require multiple factors and perspectives. That is what complexity is, right? It's just difficult, all these different moving parts and pieces and opinions. And so that is business, right? That is growing a team. There's almost nothing that is not complex about being a leader, building a company, building a team. Uncertainty, on the other hand, is the lack of predictability or the lack of control that we have over situations, events, and the outcomes of those situations and events. So those two things combined, right? <laughs> the uh, complexity and the uncertainty, that can create a tremendous amount of stress on an organization and on leaders. But in today's fast-paced, ever-changing world, these two things are the norm. And this means that leaders have to be able to navigate these challenges if they want to succeed and thrive and build teams who can handle the stress of uncertainty and challenge and, um, and complexity. So how do you go about navigating uncertainty and complexity as a leader? So here are a couple of my tips. First and foremost is you've got to just embrace the chaos. And I know that this is not easy to do, especially for people who are maybe risk adverse, who are very analytical, and for people who don't have a healthy relationship with stress. And I'm not trying to say that this is something that's easy to do, but what I've learned, the more that I resist, then the more I struggle with change, the more I stress about change, the more I spin on it. And I've learned from a great coach of mine, um, I'm going to talk about her later in the episode, she taught me to really explore resistance. When I'm feeling resistant against something, where is that coming from? And it is usually me trying to control the situation or um, overcome fear that I have in that situation. And when you allow yourself to go with the flow a little bit more, to roll with the punches, embracing the chaos, then it makes it a little bit easier to deal with it. And because uncertainty and complexity is an ongoing business issue, we have to recognize that it's just a natural part of it and that we can learn and grow from it rather than be afraid of it. So what I do to embrace the chaos is I take a few deep breaths. If I need to get emotional about it, I get emotional about it privately, or I vent to my husband or whatever I need to do to like get that initial like ugh, out. I take a couple of breaths and then I remember that 
I can get through anything. I just have to make good decisions. I need to understand the situation and I need to accept what's happening so that I can change what's happening. And that's what embrace the chaos means to me. So when big things happen, um, you know, just recently, a couple of months ago, we had the bank failure, uh, with Silicon Valley bank and it's like, what's going to happen, right? Instead of going like, oh my God, oh my God, even though we had nothing to do with Silicon Valley Bank and, and don't have those banking relationships, right? I wasn't sure what the, the ripple effect was going to be for the rest of the banks. So instead of getting fearful, panicking, um, I called my bank and I understood exactly what their position was and how they were handling it. And I made sure that I have two bank accounts so that if something did happen with one of my banks, at least we have you know cash on hand in another bank. Like I've just thought through how am I going to handle this if this has an impact on me? And how do I lead through this with a cool, calm and collected manner? And so that's what embracing the chaos is. It's going to be this way. And how I choose to show up is going to either create more chaos or calm the waters as we navigate through the next storm. So don't resist, right? Resistance usually causes more pain and hardship in the long run. And so recognizing that this is part of leading a team, growing a business, that this too shall pass. How do you navigate it to make good decisions so that you aren't coming from a place of panic? So the second aspect of being able to handle complexity and and chaos uh, and uncertainty is to cultivate a fix is to cultivate a growth mindset. So there's two different types of mindsets and, and I know a lot of you already know this, but I'll just give kind of a brief de- uh, description of either one of each of them um, so that we're on the same page here. Uh, a growth mindset means that you believe that your innate intelligence and talent can be developed with practice and with effort. So I can learn from these new things. I can grow, I can change um, because I'm curious about the world. I'm self-aware, I'm self-reflective. I hold myself accountable so I can grow. On the other hand, a fixed mindset means that you believe that your intelligence, your talent, your other qualities that you have are innate and unchangeable. So uh, I am the way I am, just have to accept it. And why a growth mindset matters, because when you believe that you can learn and grow from anything that happens to you, when a a roadblock comes up or a situation comes up, rather than looking at it as just an obstacle to overcome, um, you really can change your relationship with uncertainty. It helps you think of new, it helps you embrace new ideas, new ways of looking at a problem. It allows you to ask for feedback and to ask people for their opinions and their perspectives. And when you do this, it means that you're willing to adapt and to change. When you're in a fixed mindset, it's like, nope, this is just the way it is. It's just an obstacle that that we have to overcome. And you approach it in a much more fixed way, in a much more rigid way, which means that you're not necessarily learning and growing and potentially creating new opportunities out of the chaos. For example, a couple of years ago, Stone Age got hacked, right? An incredibly complex situation, an incredibly uncertain, chaotic situation. And as I went through it, even though I was scared and I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, I decided to lean into the discomfort of not knowing and uh, and learn as much as I can. I said, this is going to make us a stronger company. How do we learn from this so that we come out of this a stronger company? And having that mindset, which is a growth mindset, allowed us to just do that. In fact, I know it sounds crazy to say this, but I'm glad that we got hacked because of what we learned. It made us much, much stronger team because of how we came together and worked together. It helped us understand how to improve processes, helped us have a deeper understanding of our ERP system because we had to re-implement it. Um, And we have much better security, cybersecurity systems and checks and balances in place. It truly made us a better company. And I can say that I'm glad it happened is because we are better. And that's a pretty powerful thing. Now, I don't want to ever go through it again. And I wouldn't wish it on anybody. And we were lucky, right? We were lucky for being in the situation that we were in, that we could recover as quickly and easily as we did. But that's that is a really 
But having that type of mindset, that growth mindset means that you know that you can learn from any negative thing that happens to you, as long as you look at it that way. How do I become a better leader out of this situation? Even if it's painful, even if it hurts, how do we become a stronger company out of this really painful situation? If you have that type of growth mindset, then you will be far more likely to come out stronger with more self-awareness um, in a healthier place. So that's why having a growth mindset is really an important thing to have. If you don't have a growth mindset, there are things that you can do. Google, how do I improve my growth mindset? Um, we can do a whole nother episode on that, but uh, that's not what the purpose of this one is today. So we're going to move on. So the next thing that I recommend is you're navigating uncertainty and complexity is to have a really strong network. Surround yourself with people who can help you, who have been there, who have done that. That's mentors, that's colleagues, that's experts in your field. This network can be there to provide you with support, advice, insights, very, very helpful. A recent example of having a strong network that helped me navigate a complex situation is going through a recent acquisition. I just acquired a company. It was very uh, complex on how we were gonna integrate the companies, how we were going through the negotiations. And I surrounded myself with really, really great people. I had a fantastic advisor who helped negotiate the deal, um, helped us get the deal done. I learned so much from him. I had my board of directors. I had YPO, Young Presidents Organization, my forum who has, I have forum mates who have gone through lots of acquisitions. I had this really great network who could help me navigate that complexity, help me navigate the uncertainty, be able to bounce ideas off of, how should I handle this? This is what's going on. Have you experienced this before? Share your ideas with me. If I wouldn't have had this big network of people, then I wouldn't have had the ability to seek advice and experience share. And so as a leader, it's really important that you build out your network. When you build out your network, you can get through things so much easier because you have advice, you have resources, to be able to turn to. So don't underestimate the power of a strong network. Um, if you are a leader who is working in a company where things are very volatile, um, build that network, build it with your, your teammates, with your colleagues, um, get involved in, you know, associations, have a strong network of friends outside of work that you can lean on. Having a strong network will help you when times get rough. The next thing is to stay focused on your goals. So it's really easy when things get stressful and you are dealing with uncertainty and you're dealing with a, a situation that you throw your hands up in a panic and you go into survival mode, right? We just have to get this done. And when you lose sight of your goals, you might make poor decisions that then you later regret. And you can do that in life. You can do that in leadership and scaling a company that happens. But if you stay focused on your goals, it will help you be that guiding North star to say, okay, I remember why I'm doing what I'm doing here and I'm going to push through. I love this, um, analogy from, uh, Peloton. I ride my Peloton. It's a, a, a stationary bike that it's just absolutely fantastic. And they have these weight training classes. And I love one of the instructors because she said, you didn't sign up for a 36 minute class. You signed up for a 45 minute class. Don't forget what your goals were when you started this class, even though you're, it's hard and you're tired and you want to give up right now. I love that, right? I love that because you start in going like, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to complete it. And then when things get hard and you start to get tired, it's really easy to give up. So I use that analogy so much in my life because um, it is easy when things get tough to be able to give up. So remember why you're doing what you're doing. Remember your goals and your purpose and use that as your North star so that you continue to, to make those good decisions. Even when life throws you a cur curveball, when business throws you a curveball, stay focused with that. Um, we did this back in 2020 when we bought Breadware, our uh, IoT product development company. IoT means basically connected devices, smart devices. Anyway, um, we were negotiating to close the acquisition in March of 2020. And when the pandemic hit, it was like, oh gosh, should we do this, right? Do we need to conserve our cash? Should we be buying this company? You know, what happens if things get really, really bad and I spent this money and I shouldn't have? And 
it was a really tough decision. There was so much uncertainty that was going on uh, in the world at the time, but I knew what our goal was, right? We want to transition from a traditional manufacturing company to a tech company. We are getting ready to launch our first um, smart product and we need their help. And this is what we believe the future is. And so having those goals <laughs> kept me focused and helped me make a good, better decision to be able to buy the company and, uh, and continue to push our strategy forward. And I'm so glad that I made that decision, but oh my gosh, you can imagine like how nerve wracking that was, right? I lost countless nights of sleep tr trying to make the decision of, do I buy this company or do I not? at the very beginning of the pandemic. So the only reason that I did it was because I knew exactly what my goals were. I knew the risk I was taking on. I knew the company could handle it. And I made the decision because I was looking at the long-term future, the long-term goals that we were trying to achieve and it just fit too well to not do it. And then finally, communicate clearly and frequently. Leaders have to talk about complexity and certainty with their employees. It is so incredibly important. If not, your employees are going to be making up their own stories about what's going on and having a lot of maybe unnecessary fear. All throughout COVID, we communicated so regularly, right? I had weekly emails that would go out. I would make videos for my employees. We'd have company meetings. We were talking about it all the time. Everybody understood exactly the situation that the company was in and what we were doing. And they all knew what we also what we didn't know. I mean, I said, I don't know what's going to happen. These are the decisions that we're making. These are the outcomes that we are hoping happen, but we don't know. And I said, I don't know so many times to my employees, but I know that they appreciated that transparency. So in times of uncertainty, when chaos is happening, when you're dealing with a really complex situation, talk, talk to your stakeholders, talk to your customers, talk to your employees, let them know that you're listening, that you're asking for their feedback and that you care enough about them to share what's going on. That will help navigate, that will help you navigate an uncertain situation far better than if you just clamp down. I'll give you an example. Uh, recently, one of my husband's vendors, my husband has a millworks company. He makes uh, millworks and sells doors and windows and, and cabinets. And we're like the mini Siggins Home Depot of Southwest Colorado. And one of his vendors suddenly stopped taking orders and hasn't been answering the phone. And he called the sales rep and the sales rep was like, well, we're not really hundred percent sure what's going on. And because Ryan had been through the Stone Age hack, he said to the sales rep, like, well, I think maybe you got hacked. And he's like, I think so too, but they, they haven't said anything. So this company is not talking to their customers. They're not talking to their employees. They have just gone completely silent. And my husband's like, I'm not going to invest in their products anymore. I can't, I, can't, I don't know what's going on. I can't deal with a company that's not communicating um, about what's happening. That right there is such a great example of what not to do when bad things happen, when tough things happen and you don't talk about it, you clam up. People are going to make up their own stories and make their judgments and make decisions based on that lack of information. You do not want to do this as a leader. So communicate frequently, talk about what's going on, be as transparent as you possibly can. All right. So those are my tips on how to navigate uncertainty as best as you can as a leader, how to prepare yourself as a leader. Why do so many leaders fail to lead well during uncertainty? There are several reasons. The first one being fear. It is totally normal to feel anxious or afraid. When we let our anxiety or our fear stop us, when we let our fear control us, when we lose confidence to make decisions, then we are not going to lead through uncertainty well. So it's okay to be afraid. It's not okay to not take action. And so this is a really important thing to understand. Why am I afraid of this situation? Where is this fear coming from? How do I get more information to make sure that I really understand the situation so that I can make decisions? But I think that's probably the number one reason why people uh, fail to lead through uncertainty and complexity well is that they're afraid. They're afraid of the unknown. They're afraid of change. They're afraid of making poor decisions. They're afraid of failure.
The second thing, and I know this to be true, is lack of experience. Okay? Uncertainty requires leaderships to think outside the box, to find new solutions. And if you haven't gone through complex situations before, if you haven't gone through chaotic situations before, it's easy to get overwhelmed. It's easy to feel unsure of how to proceed. And so you might make poor choices or um, or not think through the challenges completely. Um, I've certainly made this mistake um, in my career and, and it's really just due to inexperience. I feel like I make much, much better decisions now because I've been through several of these situations. I know, okay, here's how I need to think through this. Here's how I need to approach this. Here's how I need to communicate through this. But you don't learn those things without going through them. So lack of experience, definitely it causes leaders to struggle with uncertainty and complexity. Rigidity is another one. People who are very rigid in their ways, who are reluctant to change, who um, are not adaptable, um, it makes it hard to pivot. And pivoting in these in these uncertain times, it's really crucial. We've pivoted multiple times as a company over the last oh, eight, decade, really, to make sure that we are meeting the ever-changing demands of our customers and the global events um, that are happening in the world that impact our business. But if you're really rigid and this is how we do things, this is the way that we've always done things, I don't want to change, then, then you're, you're really going to struggle with um, with uncertainty and navigating through these complex situations. Poor communication. We just talked about that, right? Leaders who shut down, who don't talk, who don't speak clearly and effectively. It makes it hard for people to follow those types of leaders. It makes it hard to trust that those leaders, um, have the confidence and clarity to lead through the situation. It can leave teams feeling confused or maybe even demoralized. So leaders who do not communicate well um, will struggle to lead through times of uncertainty. And then finally, lack of vision. So we talked about this, right? Knowing what your goals are, right? If you don't have a vision for yourself, for your team or your company, then it's really easy to get overwhelmed when uncertainty happens, right? Like we don't know where we're going. Like we don't know what the vision of, of this team is, this company is, and we lose sight of that direction. And we don't know how to lead our teams through it because we have that North star. So a lack of a clear vision, um, will cause leaders to struggle or even fail when uncertainty hits, when chaos hits. So those are some of the reasons why you might fail. You might struggle a little bit. So if you have any of those things, right, it's good to start to explore that within yourself to be able to say, okay, how do I get more experience in dealing with complex situations? How do I overcome my fear? How do I become more adaptable? How do I become a better communicator? How do I develop a clear vision? Like that will really help you be able to handle the next complex situation that arises so that you do lead through it better than you did the last time. If there is one leadership trait that I think that you should develop to lead well through uncertainty, and this is across the board, any leader needs to have this who's going to be successful in the chaotic business environment that exists right now, that is adaptability the ability to pivot, the ability to change, the ability to say, this isn't working, we need to change our strategy. The willingness to learn, the willingness to be resourceful in problem solving, to be able to get feedback, to see things from different perspectives, to be able to hold maybe two seemingly opposing ideas in your mind at the same time and make good decisions. Adaptability is the most important leadership trait that we can have right now to deal with uncertainty. You've got to be able to pivot, to be able to say, this is our vision. This is how we're going to make it through this. So we keep all of our teammates on, focused on that same goal. There is always going to be twists and turns in our leadership journey, in our scaling journey as we grow our businesses, as we grow our teams. And if you are not able to handle those twists and turns, it's going to be very stressful for you and for your team. And you might not succeed as a leader or be as successful as you could be. And I'm not saying that being adaptable is easy. If you are that rigid person, right, it's not easy. And I don't want to try to minimize that, right? We are who we are. But 
I really recommend that if you find yourself being very rigid um, and very resistant to change, explore that right? Explore where the fear is coming from. Explore how you can get more comfortable uh, with change, right? It might be that you need more information. You might need that network, that mentor to talk to. Um, You might need to brainstorm more ideas. Um, You might need to hire a coach to help you navigate those things. But if you are a leader who wants to be very successful in today's business environment and you are not an adaptable person, work on this. It's so incredibly important. And it's not just an important leadership trait, it's an important life trait. You know, life throws us curveballs, right? There is no straight path to where we're going. We have to adapt to what's thrown at us. In fact, that's what the human existence is all about, right? Our lives unfold daily. We don't know what's going to happen. There's no certainty in what the next minute is going to look like, what the next hour, the next day, the next year is going to look like. We are adapting no matter what. So how do you do it with grace, with confidence, with intention, directing your life, directing your team, directing your company, instead of just letting it happen because you resist, you are rigid, you push back. That is just not a successful way to lead yourself and to lead your teams or company. So That's the number one trait that I would suggest that you work on as a leader is adaptability. Ultimately, though, to sum this whole thing up, leading through uncertainty requires a very unique set of skills and qualities, and not all leaders possess them, but it does not mean that you can't develop them, right? Experience helps being intentional about how you're developing your leadership and your communication style that will continue to help you lead through the next uncertain situation, the next chaotic situation well. And it will happen. So even though we might be through the tough one of COVID, um, you know, now we're dealing with potentially the economy crashing, banking failures, uh, a, a, a war in Europe, like all of these things are going to change our business and put us in situations where we're going to have to pivot. So how are you doing that? If the economy does go down, what are you going to do? <laughs> right? Just sitting there fretting about it, worrying about it, that does not help you prepare for what might be coming next. So be intentional. Think about it. Right? How are you going to pivot? How am I going to adapt? How do I strengthen that muscle to be able to navigate through uncertainty well? So Very important leadership trait, very important conversation. There's no doubt going to be more uncertainty that we're going to be talking about. I'm confident of that. Uh, And hopefully this helped give you a couple of ideas on ways that you can prepare yourself for the next one. Okay, on to my question of the week. Um, It came from a podcast listener who said, After listening to your podcast on staying calm under pressure, I was left wondering what your relationship with stress is and how that impacts your ability to stay calm under pressure. Can you share your thoughts on this? I love this question. In fact, um, I really was remiss in that podcast by not discussing this. And, um, and the reason why this landed so much with me is that I have this conversation with my husband all the time when he comes home and he's upset or stressed about something. And I'm like, why are you stressed about that? Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like that's just part of growing a business. And he said to me one day, yeah, but you don't get stressed about this stuff. Like you are so unique in that, like the rest of the world does not, not stress about this stuff. And That comment combined with this question made me really reflect on the relationship that we all uniquely have with stress, right? My personality type combined with experience allows me to say, that's not going to stress me out. I'm going to choose to not get stressed out about this or the self work that I have done through working with coaching, through meditating, through reading, through meant being, being mentored by people, right? I have developed a lot more resilience to stressful situations. I wasn't always like that, but I would say that my relationship with stress has always been one that I can probably handle a lot. Not everybody is like that. So to stay calm under pressure, it might be a lot easier for a person like me who has, I would say a healthy relationship with stress. I know how to handle it. I know how to deal with it. In fact, I kind of like it for a person who's like, 
I don't like stress at all. In fact, when I am stressed, I tend to crumble. And so understanding what your relationship with stress is, is really important for you to be able to navigate how to stay calm under pressure. And that is uniquely you. That is your unique relationship with stress. I don't want to minimize your journey and your unique relationship with stress saying that it's just easy. Like just, you know, do some deep breaths. Think about the last time that you went through something stressful. The outcome probably wasn't as bad as you made it out to be. Like, you know, that's easy to do when you have a, a healthy relationship with stress, when you can handle a lot of stress. And that's just not everybody. So I would encourage you to explore your relationship with stress. What happens when you get stressed? What are the triggers that you have? What are the feelings that you have inside your body? And then start to work on one thing that will help you reduce your stress a little bit, or even if it's just one thing for my, me, my one thing is exercise, right? I know when I go out and get a little bit of exercise, I get some endorphins up. I can clear my head. I can have clarity in the situation and I feel better. That's my one thing that, that really helps me deal with stress. Well, what is your one thing and how does that impact your relationship with stress? I encourage you to explore that. I don't have the answer for you. No one has the answer for you. Only you will have that answer. But the deep exploration with what does stress mean to me? What does my relationship to stress look like? Will help you then be able to say, okay, <laughs> now the next time this stressful situation happens, I can explore it a little bit more deeply. I can say, okay, this is triggering me because of X, Y, Z. And, and here is my tool, my one thing, or my couple of things that I do to help ease that stress, to help stay a little bit more cool, calm, and collected in the moment. So really explore that. That's a, a, a an interesting aspect to look at, at this whole idea of remaining calm under pressure. It's not easy and you can get better at it, but you only get better at it if you do that self-work. If you really understand what stresses you out and why, um, what those triggers are and have some tools in your tool belt to be able to handle stress a little bit better. Just recently, a dear friend of mine, the coach that I've hired to lead us through um, developing tools to deal with stress at Stone Age, recently had a stress-induced heart attack. So she dislocated her finger um, in a really horrible way, couldn't have surgery for three days, was in excruciating pain um, with this broken hand. And uh, she had the surgery and after the surgery, um, went home and she started having chest pains and she went into the hospital and she was about to have a heart attack and they did a bunch of tests on her heart. There were no blockages, which is what saved her from a full blown heart attack. But the doctor said being under this much stress under that type of anxiety um, and duress from the pain for three days, that elevated stress level caused your heart to create the enzymes and the hormones that create that cause that trigger heart attacks. And this is really powerful, right? How many of us are living under such stress that literally we could create a stress induced heart attack. And I'm not saying this to scare you because, um, that is not my, my intention at all. What I am saying is that it is really important to understand how stress is impacting you and developing the tools that you need to be able to handle stress, like exercise, breathing, eating better, getting a good night's sleep, um, doing body scans, right? There are lots of tools out there to be able to help you manage your stress a little bit better, but it's really important. And for me to see this unbelievably healthy person, this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful friend of mine have a stress induced heart attack really was an eye opener. And why I wanted to have this conversation today, because man, stress matters and your relationship with stress matters what your triggers are and, and what that particular stress does to you. You know, this was acute injury, but so many of us are living in those elevated states and it's really, really important for you to address it and to start to develop those tools that you need to help just take it down a notch. If you want to get some more information on this, I highly recommend listening to uh, the Huberman Lab podcast. Um, I just actually finished this and she talks about how to control stress by healthy eating, metabolism, and aging. 
And I love this podcast because she gives some very actionable tips about stress management and what we can do to help ourselves. So I highly recommend Huberman Lab podcast and go listen to this. The episode was on April 3rd um, of 2023. So go find it. It's pretty impactful. And she gives great tips on being able to, to work with stress, um, to learn how to work with stress and to learn how to reduce that within yourself. Okay. With that, I'm going to leave you. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Reflect Forward. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share it with a friend, write a review, subscribe to it, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I always appreciate the support. Thanks so much. Have a great day.